Hello and welcome. In this video, we will discover the best techniques to never run out of things to say and keep a conversation going. Have you ever been through the situation of an awkward silence where you simply don't know what to talk about and start looking around? And before you come up with something, your date wants to leave? You see, this happens a lot in the dating arena, especially to guys who get very nervous on a date. Conversations can make your date awesome or make it a complete blunder just based on what you talk about. Therefore, it's extremely important to know what to talk about around women. Sometimes a conversation is meant to end and there's no need to push it. Watch on to discover some of the most mind-blowing ways on how to never run out of things to talk about when having a conversation. But just before, make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to download your free book to successfully seduce any girl by clicking on the link in the description below. Number 1. Talk About Hobbies Talking about your hobbies can be a good start and will help keep a conversation going. Guys like to talk about the things they like doing, such as sports. They will never run out of words when it comes to the sports they like. During the conversation, you can talk about your hobbies and you can ask him about his own, as we all have things we are passionate about. Take some time to make a short but relevant list with the things you are most passionate about and would make easy conversational topics for you. Read that list a couple of times and get to know it well. Then, when you find yourself in a stalling conversation, think about the list and find a way to maneuver the conversation to one of the topics on it. Number 2. Put Yourself First Well, if you doubt you might fall into the silent zone, it's always good to prepare yourself before the date. Make a list of handy topics and make sure you remember them whenever you fall into the silent zone. I know many people which had huge problems with keeping conversations going, and now they can do this even with the most shy or uncooperative person. How did they manage to get to this point? They've practiced. They consciously push themselves out of their comfort zone to meet new people, to socialize, and to apply techniques like the other four mentioned above. Do the same, and you'll see the same kind of results with your conversational skills. Number 3. Ask open-ended questions. This is probably the best way to keep the conversation going, but make sure you don't ask too many questions too early, especially personal questions, as that might end up offending her. One way to keep a conversation going is to get the other person talking, and the best way to do this is by addressing her open-ended questions. These are questions which require more than simple yes or no answers and offer the possibility of much richer answers. Questions like, what do you think of this event, instead of, do you like this event? These kinds of questions encourage people to talk, and they can be a lifesaver in stalling conversations. Talk about the other person. A great way to keep the conversation going is to talk about the person that you are talking to. Pay an interest into their upbringing, social values, and way of life. If you show interest to the other person, then the conversation will never die. Asking questions is also a good way of getting her involved and interested in the conversation as she would feel you're interested in something. Number 4. Add a lot of humor Once you add some humor into the conversation, topics instantly come up. You see, when you are in a happy mood, your brain instantly starts to function fast and you would be able to come up with more better topics than you ever thought possible. You see, this normally happens as laughter helps you open up with the person and you start talking to your date on a personal level. Number 5. Blurt Often we find it hard to keep a conversation going not because we can't think of anything to say, but because we fear the other person won't enjoy that particular subject, fact, or opinion we have in mind. However, most of the time, this fear is not anchored in reality. This is where blurting comes in. Blurting is a conversational technique which means saying whatever you're thinking about in that moment instead of censoring yourself. Give it a try and you'll discover that people are not that harsh and they can enjoy a lot of things in a conversation. Number 6. Listen a lot Figuring out how to stop running out of things to say to women is simple. Listen. Listen to what women talk about, ask questions that are related to their concerns, and listen more. You may not say a lot when you're with someone if you ask questions about what they care about. How do you find out what they like? Listen to them. Listen to what they talk about. Listen to what they share with friends and focus on asking them things related to those things. If you do that, you'll never run out of things to say. 
Number 7. Keep yourself busy The next thing that you need to do is simple. Keep yourself busy. Make sure that you're busy with hobbies and friends, and don't just isolate yourself with one woman. There's nothing wrong with exploring hobbies, so do it. Keep yourself busy, and you'll be asked questions and different things from the dates you have. Focusing on learning how to stop running out of things to say to women should not be the only thing that you're doing. Make sure that you focus on things that will no doubt interest others, and just stay open. Number 8. Let the other person end the silence Most people are uncomfortable with silences in a conversation. When one occurs, they immediately try to fill it by finding something to say. You can use this to keep a conversation going. When, for example, you've just met a person at a party, you're talking and the conversation is stalling, do not leave that person and go find the peanuts or something like that. Instead, hang in there and let the silence work for you. Most of the time, the other person will eventually pick up the conversation and end the silence. Number 9. Stories from Everywhere Everyone knows that stories juice up conversations, but most people only talk about stories in their own lives. You don't have to draw from your own experience when speaking with someone. You can use stories from anywhere, from stories that happen to people you know, to those you came across via the radio, TV, magazines, etc. How can you integrate the stories into your conversation? The key is to first realize that you can use them. You've already heard them, and the more interesting or weird they are, the harder they are to forget, so you're all good. Your brain doesn't lose them. When someone mentions something related to any of them, just tell the story, even if it's not from your life. It can be any silly story, short or long, interesting or totally awkward, just use it. People love talking to people who can just share stuff openly like that. Number 10. No filtering. This is the reflex that allows you to say whatever goes on in your mind. No filtering, no checking with yourself, would I sound cool if I say this, none of that. The best way to practice this is to start doing it with people you kind of know. Do you dare to try it? It's fun to realize that you're allowed to say whatever is on your mind and no one is going to judge you for it. As long as you don't say anything that could land you in jail, you're okay. People don't care too much about how awesome what you're saying is because they're too focused on how they're coming across. 11. Use things around you as inspiration for new topics. Take inspiration from your environment and make a comment or ask a question about it to not run out of things to say. Something like, love these plants, are you good at growing stuff? Or, I like this new office, is there a difference in commute time for you? Number 12. Make simple, positive statements. I think of these as conversation buffers. They keep the conversation going, but they're not too deep. A simple, positive statement could be, what a cool house, or it's sunny today. This is a fairly organic way to move on to new topics. It helps you see if you have a connection on something else, like being interested in architecture or what weather you prefer, and based on that, where you'd rather live. You don't need to fabricate statements. Your mind already makes statements about things. That's how the mind works. Feel free to let those thoughts out. 13. Know that people do want to learn about you, too. It's a myth that people only want to talk about themselves. They also want to get a picture of the person they're talking to, you. Don't be afraid to share things about yourself as long as you're also showing interest in the other person. Balance with the other person how much you share. If someone gives you an in-depth explanation of their job, give them an in-depth explanation of your job. If they just briefly mention what they do, briefly mention what you do. This helps us bond because we are revealing things to each other at the same pace. You're keeping it interesting for your partner because you're opening up too. 14. Be comfortable with some silence rather than trying to avoid it. Silence happens. It's not a bad thing. It's a natural part of conversation, and letting it happen rather than trying to fill it is okay. In fact, silence has a purpose. It gives you time to take a breath and think and to make the conversation more meaningful. Letting there be silence and not being anxious about it helps you bond with the other person. If you learn to be comfortable with the silence, it can be refreshing to not have to talk all the time. Filling every break in a conversation with words can come off as anxious. Remember that a conversation is between two people who are both participating equally. If you need a few seconds break, take it. They might need it too. 
Finally, remember that you don't have to keep a conversation going no matter what. If you see the person you're talking to is simply refusing to participate in the conversation and be sociable, you can end the conversation politely and go talk to someone else. However, I believe you have the responsibility to at least try and make a conversation work. And if you do this well, you'll be significantly more able to make great friends and influence people. Now that you know the tricks to keep a conversation going, the next thing you should do is apply one of these tricks the next time you talk with someone. Don't overwhelm yourself trying to use all these tricks at the same time. Get used to one of these first. When you can master one of the tricks, you'll feel more confident to apply the other techniques in your upcoming conversations too. These techniques should get you started, but if you want to take it to an advanced level, to the point where you can just have fun when talking to anyone, meet the right people you want in your life, and be able to make friends with them fast, then I recommend you take a little more time to learn more about how conversations work. If you do that, you'll make conversations far more interesting, with natural ease, avoiding all awkward silences that might prevent you from meeting the right friends that you would love to have around. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and especially subscribe to the channel. You're also free to receive the new book, 9 Keys to Seduce Any Girl, by clicking on the link in the description below.